you know, and, and, and as, as I was reading your works, getting ready for this, I mean, you know, I, I think about, you know, Mitchell, you, you were saying as a kid, I was always a writer. Uh, I was doing this, but I was, I was a drug dealer too. I mean, I mean, so the, the, the idea, but it does seem to sport most more so than anything else has these guys. I mean, you got to throw into this Paul Robeson and, and, and Bill Bradley and, and, you know, people that, that were doing, a, you know, uh, a Shaq and Kobe just trying to be rappers, of, you know, in, in some moment in, in, the, in their life, Master P, you know, I can do this and I, I can play, play in the league. But, but how, how's that come, come in, into play? How, how, or do we need athletes to, to branch up more? Or, or am I missing that they're, they're doing more of that the more successful they get? Uh, man, I feel like it's a, I have a tremendous amount of respect. I mean, I, I played with some guys um, that went pro. And I, I like to tell see... the story. He always telling the talk about the boys that made it to the NBA. <laughs> okay, I'll tell a story that I have not told. I was playing in a tournament one year, and uh, there was a guy named Michael Dickerson. He played at, I think he played at the University of Arizona. And he ended up going to the league, but we were in high school. I think he was a year behind me. And someone threw him at alley -oop, and I went to like block the alley -oop, and he went up like several inches more than me and he dunked it. And I real and I was on, I was about to be a senior in high school. And I realized probably in that moment that that was not my destiny. Now I still held on, <laughs> right? Uh, I held on, but I, but I, I'm, I'm also very thankful because you need to be disabused of that early. Because if you hold on to it into manhood, if it becomes a part of how you define yourself as a man, it's very hard to let go of it then, right? And then it becomes, it can become toxic in a way where you might, you know, you hold on too long or you, you, you develop some other kind of neuroses or, or some kind of toxicity that you can't get rid of because you don't have this, right? So I didn't have enough caring for, for me to lose it and then miss it. But I, but I do, I, I wonder and I worry about the guys who've had too many cheers, especially like if you're talking about like Bill Bradley, like those guys had the cheers, but not the money. So they had right. to figure out a new identity, like Kobe, Shaq and them, they could just be in basketball for the rest of their lives or not. They don't have to do anything really, but, but a guy it, that's from an earlier era has to figure out a new way to exist. It's so many of us though. I mean, this is the other thing though, right? It's like so many of us who... I mean, you go to any college across the country, they got a pickup game. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they got, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I do think that the struggle is with, it's, it's, it's like how far you get along the line of the potential of making it. Yeah. And how do you calibrate the need to do something or be something else? And how do you get exposed to something else? Because, because the truth is that I was watching some documentary and a dude was talking about how he had two knee surgeries while he was in college. It's like, well, why would you, why would you stay? And it's like, because Lazarus is real. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, what do you mean? Why would you stay? They're like, Mitch got a Pulitzer Prize and he was in prison. All I did is hurt my knee. You telling me I can't be the 12th man on an NBA team? You know what I mean? But but the but the trick of it all is like it it, it takes so much time to train, to get ready, to study film that I, I wonder if it's possible to nurture those other skills. Cause when you talk about the Shacks and the, Co when you talk about Shaq and we talk about Bill Bradley, and even when you talk about Kobe on his second act, they had already been successful enough where they had money to buy them the time that was necessary to cultivate and develop some other skills. And I do think that's the rub of why you need to be disabused, why it feels like it's good to be disabused early because then you can start investing that time in somewhere else. But quiet as kept, I think the discipline that goes into being an athlete trains you if you figure out how to apply it to something else because most people don't train four or five days a week three four hours a day at anything and if it's anything else that prepares you to be a writer or that prepare i mean for real i took the the the, the exam to get into law school as if i was training at, at like if it, as if i was a basketball player i was like bro i got practice four hours a day and i was studying those exams and i was taking those exams and so it's like, how do you, now I didn't have the history of being an athlete to lean on when I was doing it, but I know now I could compare it and, and, and create an analogy between what I was doing and what athletes do. So 
So I don't know. I mean, I think it's dangerous, but I think in, in a real way, if, if, if we figure out how to expose young people to how they are developing a skill set that's transferable, that, that it would be it would it would be helpful for them. But I think that we often don't don't teach people that. I want to back up and say something that I thought about um, your question before we went to the before best did this thing was about creativity and uh and in and, and sports, and I was thinking, like, it's hard to watch John Morant or Steph or uh, LaMelo and not think about, like, really great jazz. And I'm not, like, a fish mm. but but, like, to think about what a person can do with that kind of creativity. And I think if we're talking about bridging, like, how do they translate? I think if, if there is a way to kind of show people how those two things are tied, like, how a person can do this thing with their body or with a basketball or with a football, you know, like a great running back and how that is, is, is really tied to the kind of creativity you need to write a, I, don't, I won't speak about writing a great poem because I can't do that, but to write uh, some, some, some good prose. Um, so I think that I, I see those as like coming out of the same source, right? That like you work so hard on your craft that you're able to do things creatively that are instinctual Right. I've trained I've I've taught like poetry workshops. It was it was this um it was this one play where um where I saw LeBron James. He um he like the whole play was set up, but he did a, a wraparound pass along the baseline. And when you see it, it looks like it was it was spontaneous, but in fact it was actually this like sort of well thought out play that they was working on. And I guess and I guess when I when I think about that thing, I say that that what you see in sports is kind of improvisation. That is akin to to being to, it is creative, and I and I think the challenge is this to help people see not only that it's creative but how it it actually maps on to some other things like writing. But I do think you got a lot of people who were like they didn't make it to the NBA and they became writers. You know, they played in college and they became writers. And I, and it's funny when we were talking, I was like, man, what would it look like to write a piece about um, professional athletes who retired and went into business? Or even thinking about professional athletes who retired and went into broadcasting because everybody's not good. So what is it that makes Michael Strahan so extraordinarily good? And some of it might actually be training that he got before he, he went to the NFL. There might be some classes he took in college that hipped him to some of the things he needed. Or some of it might just be his natural gift. But I, I don't actually think that we have, like Jamal Mashburn is killing it in, right. in the business world. you know. And I don't think we have, we have a lot of narratives about I won't even name those people who blow their money, but but we don't have a lot of narratives. Like just like a, a long form New York Times Harper's piece that's really thinking about the introspective and creative life of, of athletes, right? It just kind of disappears. But I do think those things exist. Um, Ray Allen is involved with a lot of stuff. I think LeBron James is exceptional in some ways because um, because you're not supposed to be successful if you get that much power and talent and money at 17. You just not.